you've been around my channel at all, you know that I love reading in my classroom, whether it's talking about books you can use with your students, stories you can use with your students, or activities you can do with any reading. I talk about reading quite a bit. So today what I wanted to do is share with you six books by Diego Ojeda that you could use in your classroom in levels one through four, and actually some heritage speakers as well. Let's get right into it. Hey, it's Ashley, aka Senior to Spanish, where I provide easy to use resources to save you time and energy while you're lesson planning for your classes. If you're new here, I just want to make sure that you know that links to everything that I mentioned in this video will be down in the description box below. So first off, if you're not familiar with Diego's work, he is super active in the professional development and online learning communities for teachers. He offers webinars, workshops, and even does some mentorship opportunity, especially for AP Spanish teachers. So if you don't know him and you don't know where to connect with him, I'll make sure to link to his stuff down in the description box below, but make sure you take advantage of the opportunities he offers to learn from him because he has a lot of great professional development resources along with all of his amazing work as an author that we're gonna look at today. So let's look at the books. The first option I have for you is Poesia Grammatical. Where is it? There it is. So as you might guess from the title of this one, it's a collection of poems, but each of them has a different grammatical focus. And something that I really like about this book is that each poem has a vocabulary list, but then also the little like section or note about whatever the grammar focus was. So if you are somebody who is teaching with a textbook, this might be something that you could pull out, flip through, find something that fits your unit and just use that one poem in your unit rather than the whole book. Corazón sin borrador is an emphasis on friendship and relationships. This is really good for Spanish one and two. It would probably be too easy for your threes and fours. It's for secondary students really more than your elementary students. It is again a collection of poems so you can see kind of how they're set up. But at the end of the book, there's also a section with like activities and questions and things you could do. So if you were going to do this as a whole class, rather than just putting it in your FER library at the very end, there are some resources for you, the teacher. Acuero Natural is a series of poems about the environment and about nature and kind of our relationship with the earth. This is something that would be good for two, three, and four, especially I know sometimes in those levels, you might do a unit on like the environment. This would be a good fit for them. Um, they are, again, short poems set up. And there are, here, let's see if I can just kind of flip through it for you like that so you can kind of see. There's kind of these cute little illustrations that go with them and that sort of thing as well. Again, this is something where you could just pull out one or two poems or you could work your way through the whole book as a class as well. Okay, the next one I have for you, I actually only have the French copy and this is probably something I grabbed for myself because every now and then I think that I'm going to spend my free time such as it is learning French, even though my French is terrible and awful, but just know that <laughs> it does come in Spanish. I just didn't have a Spanish copy to show you. Sorry. <laughs> this is about immigration and like the human experience that happens in those traveling between borders and that kind of thing. This is really cool because it actually shares a lot about Diego's own perspective. This one would probably be a little too high for your level one, but there are things in it that your Spanish twos could get and definitely three, four and AP, especially if you're doing a unit on immigration and talking about kind of any of those stories of journey and travel and how difficult and how challenging that can be. Um, and just kind of that search for like, you know, home. Okay, next one I have for you is Sonrisas Ocultas. And this one is actually not poetry. It's a collection of short stories. And I don't know if you can kind of tell on the cover, there's a school with like a mask over it and the kids all have masks on. This is a collection of stories about, I don't know, it's hard to say like a post pandemic world, but kind of talking about how our world is changed and how relationships have changed and how people have changed, how setting, how, just how things have changed since the pandemic. So this is a series of short stories. Let's see if I can get you kind of show you some of the pictures. There are vocabulary notes down on the bottom. This is something that is for your upper level. So Spanish for heritage speakers. If you teach heritage classes, this would be a good fit for that. And the last one I have for you is Que Tiempo Hace, which you can probably guess the topic of the poems inside this one. This book is full of really simple language, weather vocabulary. Your ones and twos are gonna be able to understand it, but you know what? Something that I think could be kind of cool to do with this especially if you are somebody who does a daily routine at the start of class where you do a check-in and then maybe you talk about the weather and you talk about calendar talk 
and you've been doing that for years and now your Spanish threes are doing it and you're like, I'm sick of talking about the weather with my threes because they're over it. The thing about this book is that in each of the poems at the end, there's a question, right? So it's like a little discussion question. So for example, this one says, Te gustan los días nublados? Por qué? That could be a great option to have as a daily routine with your threes, right? Maybe you read the poem and then you do a little discussion question and a little like chat and sharing opinions, right? Asking each other what they think is a great way to kind of build on the weather vocabulary that you had been using in your daily routine every day for two years. And now you're like, we cannot talk about the weather anymore. They could look outside and tell me what the weather is, but you still kind of want to do some fun discussion with them. I like a lot of these discussion questions in here, like, que prefieres, a color o el frío? Which, you know, your ones and twos could talk about too, but if you're just looking for a way to expand on your daily routine, I think that's a good option. Okay, I mentioned in my unit plan video how you could kind of pull a short story and then base an entire unit around it. A lot of these poems could work the same way. If you just pull out a poem, you can really get a lot out of it. The other thing that I like about these for FVR, right, if you get them in your classroom library, is that they just feel more approachable and more manageable for students. It's kind of like what we talk about when you think about young adult novels or novels that have shorter chapters, right? It's just short. They finish one section and they're, they're done with the section already. It's an easy win for students for our language learners because they feel like they're getting somewhere in the story. They're getting somewhere in the book. They don't have to read 20 pages before they finally get through one chapter. It's just, you know, even this is just one, right? There's another one. So that makes it a little bit more approachable for our learners. So these are not all of Diego's books. These are just the ones I chose to share with you today. I definitely recommend that you check them out and you see which ones you think would be a good fit for your classes, whether it's for a unit or just to add to your classroom library, definitely go check them out. Oh, and just let me know if you'd like a closer look inside any of them like I do in my playlist here where I open the books up and I flip through them so you can actually see what kind of language is there, what kind of supports are there for your students like in this playlist. So if you want to see any of those up close, make sure you drop me a comment down below and let me know. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.